kind of half floating there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Right down that channel. <laughs> behind you. Okay. Now let's try this other piece. Oh, let's see. Let's see. It's got to go in the right way first. Definitely. This goes under. Now remember, I'm still new to this bike. I, sorry, I'm still new to this ATV. I, I like to say bike because that's what I'm used to things being called. But anyway, some people get pretty testy, but it's not a bike. All right, so part of doing the snorkels for the uh, clutch or your CVT, this is the exhaust. Uh, this boot, you reuse it. This is part of the original plastic piece. And this was the, this here, kind of fit under here like this, okay? So what you gotta do is give it a cut. Uh, again, there's no measurements or nothing. You know, you just gotta kind of wing it where you think it looks like it's the best angle. But anyways, let me tell you, putting this freaking boot on, you're supposed to, it's, if you can see in the here, you see in the camera here, this is not round, okay? It's almost like, get a bit of a heart shape to it. So when you're putting a round rubber boot on and clamping it down tight, boy oh boy, this thing wanted to, uh, this here wanted to sink in when you got tight. So, yeah, it was a pain in the nuts, let me tell you. I was already frustrated a little bit from the big screw up and the hole in the airbox, but I didn't let it bother me for once. So I'll move on to something else see so I can move forward. Well, I put in the, this rubber boot on here with the silicone and it's hard to go on and it slips off. I got silicone all over the place. Of course, I forgot to put gloves on because I was in a hurry or rushing or whatever you want to call it. And got silicone all over my shirt. Oh, my shorts. Yeah, that really pissed me off. That's for sure. So here's a quick look. I got the left-hand side sort of mocked up to see how everything was gonna fit. And we're definitely gonna need to do some adjustments down in here, down in here. It's tight. The plastic seems to be going on okay. I've got this installed permanently. I've got this installed permanently back over here. It's got silicone inside, uh, undo the clamp, and you will be able to undo it, it like with a bit of effort, but it'll come loose. Now, one of the biggest struggles I had was right here. Putting this, when I was putting this fender back on, oh my God. So, take a looky loo underneath here. So, this down here is a fuel tank. A little rubber uh, coupling, Franco coupling goes to the neck of the filler up there. Well, getting it in properly was really, really hard. You know, it's got a big thick neck on it so it doesn't come off easy. Well, here's part of the situation. It was getting kind of late at night and uh, I had a few garage pops, I'm not gonna lie. So uh, I was maybe not thinking as clearly and uh, probably should have shut it down a little sooner. Anyways, I figured that was my hang up point. So I'm like, that's my hang up point and I'm pushing on it and reefing on it. And all kinds of other good stuff. Then I finally get the idea. So hey, let's get the big rubber mallet and whack it. Because it needs to go down. Huh, yeah, I did that. And uh, broke this little piece off here. Uh, yeah, we, we've got some, I got some special glue. We can uh, glue that back together. Yeah, what are you gonna do? This here is gonna get me into another section on where I'm really disappointed in this kit. This here, is the instructions. The information is there, it's not super clear. Now that I've gone through it, you kind of understand what they're trying to say once you've gone through it a few times, but it's not as good as it could be. This is my biggest bone of contention right here. Look at this picture, look at it. This is, this is the only thing that tells you you're supposed to line up with this inner fender cover and we're gonna drill holes. If you could tell me exactly where that bottom hole is, the top one you can kind of guess by, by looking at it. But you can tell in the picture that it goes down by the frame. Okay, so I figured, well, that's a nice low point and then it's gotta come back up, up and flex away from the uh, shock. There's lots of hose, so that's probably why it's that long. I'm still having some problems 
with a fitting because I'm uh, maybe about a high quarter or three eighths of an inch off on those holes there. And I've got that down finally. And you know what happened? I didn't get it on whacking it and everything and then the next day I came along look at it again in the morning fresh. I just leaned on a little bit and popped right in. Go figure, eh? Nowhere in these destructions here yeah. does it show that you've got a cut. The only thing you got a cut, this panel right here. And I've trimmed it pretty good. It's not bad. Seems like it's gonna work. However, the biggest problem I got is right down here. Look it, look it. This here is not lined up. And then we get all cattywampus over here. It's like it's gotta go down. But the only thing that really hop, stops you from going down is the fuel filler, which I've already talked about. And these guys are loose, like I don't know, unless it's hitting something on the back side. It shows you, again, I showed you this picture really, where you're magically supposed to put these holes and you can't see in the goddamn picture, but. You know, you gotta use your own uh, ingenuity, obviously. So, uh, anyways, we're mostly there. So from underneath, you put this little spacer piece on, and then it's gonna come up underneath. I'm gonna put it in. Now here's the worst part of it. This stupid rubber gasket, this rubber gasket doesn't fit. It doesn't fit, or it's too, the hole is too freaking small. It's a pain. All right, here goes nothing. So now I already put a little bead of silicone around the threads. That's to help it go on, and it also to help seal it. But it should be all right. All right, here goes nothing. And this is the freaking hardest part right here. Getting this friggin' gasket to go on. Okay, check this out. I got it on there started, but that's about as far as you can go. There's just, oh frick, see that? All right, I'm gonna give it a go. I'm hoping. You can even see here how the friggin' two gaskets overlap, so kind of get in each other's way. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. It's just so hard to get started. Come on. As things they slide together. And bingo, bango, there you go. All right, we're about to install the uh, two flex pipe pieces between the uh, snorkel connection and the connection that goes back to the airbox. So we're just gonna put a little bit of silicone in here. Make sure I get a good bead all the way around. So it's gonna be continuous. This is it. So, oh, that's, that's fitting quite nicely. What happens when you put the silicone on, it, uh, it's slippery. And uh, it wants to slide off the fitting. But in this case, there's enough tension. Get that on there. Snug. Okay. Now, we gotta get this guy back here. Oh yeah, this one's sitting on there nicely. Pretty happy with that. Go to number two. All right. Okay. This way. Sure. Get all flex it around. Yeah, that's sitting in there nicely. This side I'm pretty happy with. So this side here, we got some work to do. I think I got it figured out. I had this in the wrong spot, I had it behind. And now that I moved it to the front, holy cow, look at that, it actually lines up a hell of a lot better. Should be able to get that lined up all right. Then, come over here, these things seem okay. Like, they're gonna work. 
There's a little bit of tension on it, not bad. That's lined up. That's lined up. I just had to manipulate this a bit. And I had to manipulate up in here. This, this hose here goes in behind the intake here, back around. See if you can see it in there or not. Yeah, you kind of see it. And it kind of comes on a cockeyed angle. All right, here we are. We've got this piece trimmed up. Uh, I test fit it before, it seemed okay. I noticed there's a little trouble at the back here. Back in behind this fender, I thought I spot I didn't like, so I trimmed it, which was not in the destructions, but I think it's gonna make it work better. So this, as they say, could be the moment of truth. Let's try it out. Okay. So that's, that's lined up good down the footwell, this here. You know what, let's, where's my stuff? Okay. here that's good the one in here okay not bad well, at least it's not in oh, what's going on here? oh yeah there we go okay that's gonna work this is a bit of concern but I think there's there's lots of room to play here yeah she's popped out I think it's gonna be good. It almost makes you look like you might wanna trim some of this here. We got everything pretty well situated, I'm pretty happy. Had to do a little bit of trimming here and there to make it uh, fit as best as it could. So, did a test, to test for leaks on the intake side and uh, blocked the holes off. Yeah, no, uh, didn't shut off, it's not good. So anyways, I traced back the air leak I found it here on this vent hose that goes from the air box back to this connection on top of the valve cover. And on it, it had this goofy little clamp on it. When I pulled the hose off, the hose actually had like almost like a triangle shape to it. So it wasn't closing around the round uh, spigot that comes off of here. Put some silicone around the hose and a small gear clamp. And I had to sort of jam it in here with my trusty dandy uh, yellow ho orange hockey ball uh, holder because the silicone is so slippery it doesn't want to stay. Fire in the hole! Okay, let's test out these uh, snorkels. See if we got a good seal on the air box. One hockey puck. I got her. I'm happy. We got her sealed up. Okay, boys, here we are. The finished install, well, sorry, 98% of the finished install of the Snorkel Your ATV with the Warrior Riser kit that fits a 2012 to a 2016 Sportsman 850. So I just don't have my back rack on right now. I'll put it back on. I had to do some trimming here. Now the kit doesn't really call for much trimming other than this piece right here. I personally did more trimming than the kit called for. There's this hose for the exhaust. 
nestles itself along the case. I've got some zip ties back here. I've got some rubber in between and I zip tied it to the frame to try to keep it from moving. So what I did personally is I trimmed a fair bit off of this right here. I trimmed that. Uh, so there's it can move in there, but it's not sitting tight. Like it's gonna sit snug, but it's got room to move. It's not jamming at all. So I'm happy with that. You know, I, need to, I made some uh, custom spots so I could zip tie things down better. You know, try to keep it from uh, thinking of how the hoses are gonna be when they get full of muck and goo and stuff so that they're not gonna wanna pull down. May come up with a few other things, but right now that's about as good as it's gonna get till we uh, actually try it in the field. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna silicone the risers in with my extensions I have. So under this right hand side, uh, it's pretty good, pretty clean. I did put a couple zip ties there just to pull that inside hose away from the shock spring a little bit. It's got pretty good clearance, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And this thing's all fits pretty good in here. Kind of half floating there, isn't it? Oh yeah. Get right down that channel. <laughs> I'll come behind you. Okay. Get on the channel and then see if you can pop out over there. There she goes. So just uh, so get the front end up. So, so yeah. give her some good gas. 